Here I show a simulation of a small nanoparticle where I add heat, uh, as you can see here on the x-axis, and then I measure temperature, which I plot here on the y-axis. And you can see as I add more and more heat, the particles get red, they have most kinetic energy. Right? And the atoms uh, begin to move more and more, and bonds are beginning to break. And you can see the as I add heat, I increase the temperature. But now notice here, I keep adding heat, but the temperature does not rise as fast. And that is because the heat I add is now being used to break bonds instead of increasing the temperature. Right? So you can see more and more bonds are being broken, you get free atoms or particles moving around, and the temperature is not changing or increasing nearly as much, even though I, I add heat. Okay, now most of the bonds are broken. And so now the heat that I add, again, is going into raising the temperature. All right, so you can see the temperature now goes up and up and up. No more bonds are broken, so all the heat energy goes into kinetic energy or temperature again. Okay, now I'm going to plot this in a slightly different way. I'm going to move the axes around so that temperature is on the x-axis and heat is on the y-axis. And now I'm going to smooth the data a little. It's a little rough here, especially in the middle, because I added heat quite fast in order to keep the simulation at a reasonable time. So I smooth it out now using the blue curve, and the blue curve I'm going to use to... Uh, calculate how fast the energy changes as I change the temperature, which is the heat capacity. You can see that the heat capacity, which is the red curve here, is a maximum exactly here where the energy changes the most as a function of temperature, or conversely where the temperature changes the least as a function of added energy. And that, as we saw in the simulation, is where the particle melts. So that is the melting temperature right here, where the heat capacity is a maximum. Uh, also, uh, as you saw in the previous uh, simulation, the volume here doesn't change. And so here we have the heat capacity at constant volume, which is uh, the change in internal energy as a, part, as a function of the change in temperature. So that, ex that is exactly what I uh, said before. So when the heat capacity is at a maximum, that means that the change in temperature with respect to added energy is smallest. Uh, and so that means that the supplied energy is used to break the bonds instead of increasing the temperature. So when all the energy goes into breaking the bonds, then all the bonds break spontaneously. Uh, and so that means that the standard free energy of the reactant has to be equal to the standard free energy of the product. So the heat capacity is a maximum when the delta G standard at the temperature where the delta G standard the change is zero, and that is the melting temperature. Okay, so here's a question for you. So here is a, a picture of three different states uh, from, taken from the simulation, and the question is, for which state is the heat capacity highest? So press the pause button, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? Okay, so the answer is C, uh, because that is the state where it's not quite a solid, it's not quite a gas, it's somewhere in between, it's the uh, part of the simulation where it's melting. Uh, and so we can see that here. So at, low, at lower temperatures, it's a solid, at higher temperatures, it's a gas, 
uh, and right here uh, you have the transition from uh, the solid state to the gas so that's what we call the melting temperature